everyone and welcome to this episode of Scare Cam. It's myself, Hannah, Kate and Martin. We have just arrived here at Farmer Ted's Farm Park, which means we're here for a Farmageddon exclusive behind the scenes look of their new attractions. We've got uh, Beast of Terror, which is going to be the biggest, one of the biggest scare attractions here in the UK. We're going to meet up with Mark. Mark Edwards is the owner, creative director, designer here at Farmageddon. He's invited us along to come and check the place out. Uh, we've been coming in for a few years, but Kate's not been before. Never, yeah. never, ever, So ever. it's your first time. Exciting. Yeah, and uh, <laughs> myself and Hannah and Martin have been a few years on the truck now, and we're looking forward to coming on press night, which is in September. Uh, I think Farmageddon are the, the earliest press night we have for October, so it'll be the first uh I love it as well, they always do an absolutely incredible press night and, and then as soon as you get past that whole point and it's open to actual public, it's amazing. It I is fantastic, it. they've got some amazing attractions. Uh, so uh, we're going to be chatting to Mark throughout the next hour or so, which will all be on the podcast. So if you want to hear that with some exclusive behind the scenes, uh, talking about how the attractions are built, designed, created, how they go into uh, a character development and actor training. We're going to talk about absolutely loads today uh, and Hannah's going to be filming bits and bobs as well. Uh, so if you want to hear all of that guys, just head over to scaretrack.podbean.com or just check it out on all our social media, iTunes, Stitch it, it's absolutely everywhere. Uh, but if you don't want to listen to that and just want to see a little bit behind the scenes, then uh, come and join us today on the Scarecam blog. See you in a bit guys. The one that always makes me scream. Yep. Yeah. Yeah. Sort of Ch chainsaws. <laughs> yeah. Chainsaws. We've got chainsaw at the back. We've got treatment plants. Um, and this originally, in its first day, when we first opened in 2007, was called Squirm 3D. And Stuart Smith did our artwork way back then. And he actually designed the Farmageddon skull. You know the logo. Yeah. That we have. And I contacted him just on a whim and he said yeah we can let you have that and we tried to mess to nothing to be honest and sent me the cds in the post and the, the files on the cds were like 33 meg now back in 2007 it took my computer yeah. hours to, <laughs> to, <laughs> to yeah. process it because you couldn't email it it was too big this this actually used to be a turntable and it would rotate 360 degrees oh, right. when it was insanity and where we're stood now was the queue line so oh, all behind us was queue line, and then this would turn around. We'd put eight or ten people in there, and then it would turn around 180 oh, degrees. Okay. So as one one half was emptying, the other half would be filled, filled like our Scooby Doo wall. Yeah, yeah, so, exactly. And it was, it was, yeah, yeah. <laughs> exactly, and it was great. Yeah. But then as as the business grew and grew, the um, the motor that was driving this it was just getting hotter and hotter and hotter. Yeah. Um, and the capacity is yeah, getting bigger yeah, and bigger as so, well. And that was our pinch point. Um, so now it's um, it's become part of the attraction. Of the it just wants re readjusting now because we've had obviously a work back in there and yeah. building it. Lifting and shifting and stuff. It throws you off a bit going into such a big room. You don't yeah. expect it after so many like small corridors, mm. and it's just coming in like, whoa, yeah. hang on. And that's you know that's the the, the secret to scare the scare attractions is you've got to you know it's a journey, so it's not all yeah. high intensity all the time. Yeah, you're building up and down, and yeah. hopefully throw a few surprises in there. Uh, this is actually Cliff Richard here. Well, it isn't Cliff himself, is it? <laughs> He's one of the UK's last bastards, but it looks like his brother. <laughs> <laughs> and this guy here, his, uh, his brother works for us. <laughs> yeah. It does. Believe it or not, it does. The new one. Yeah. This is the new Freak Street area for last year. Ooh. So this area doubles up for many, many different things. I prefer um, the pole dancers that come away. That's right. During Farmageddon, this is Freak Street. So 
So basically, it's a nightclub. Yeah. Um, and we have zombie flash mob dancers. Um, we have a magician that does some stuff on the stage. And uh, it's quite good, actually, because having it was the first first outing last year. We didn't really know it was going to work, and we just went from there. Yeah, it was great. We, we were having a dance off with the customers. Yeah. And it was great. We spent half our time in it, didn't we? Yeah, yeah. It's just mad. It was good that every time we come down as well, there's a different thing going on. Yes, yeah. Yeah, it's really good. It's uh, it's sort of like if you mixed a scare zone with a stage show mm. and a party, exactly. mash it all together. Um, it, it works spot on. Yeah, we got the DJ up there as well. Uh, there's four lines of queue here before they go in through the claustrophobia line. So um, they're not feeling they're not even bored queuing no. because they've got stuff to see and stuff to do. Yeah. Yeah. So right, so now we're going to. Take a shortcut. See the camera. You get a lot of um, attractions in, oh, oh, no. <laughs> in the US that will just be like no actors walk through. Yes. Yeah. Like this. Consistent. I've never seen, because um, I'm an airbrush artist as well, and like I've never seen in the UK anyone actually bother to get. Well, the guy from this the show's been doing it for years. Yeah. You know, now makes a good living out of it. This kind of detail I've not seen in the UK. Yeah. You can do anything you like as long as it's this. <laughs> <laughs> but he, has, he, he, does, he will put a bit of a twist on it now and again. Uh, but no, it's, it's amazing how you think you can put your, yeah. your hand in the wall. Yeah, definitely. Do you have a vibe with, um, obviously, you have thousands of people walk through this? Do, do, do they keep. Need a lot of maintaining, especially the Well, we got three years out of it. Three years. Um, okay. And we've just redone it again this year. Yeah, yeah. So fourth year this year. Yeah. But because, you know, we're using decent quality timber, we're using decent quality paints, you know, we will get. And, and also, there's no mud coming in from outside. True, yeah. Because it's, it's all under cover out, out you know, the queue line area. Yeah, okay. um, We're not getting mud in and all that, yeah. So, how long roughly did it take him to paint all this? Originally, yeah. when we first did it, it took him um, two and a half weeks. Really? Yeah. Epic. I sprayed over it black and then I was just basically mixing the paint for him, helping him out, lifting and shifting. Um, and then, uh, yeah. So he so does all the walls detail. first and then we finish with the floors mm. and, and work our way out. Times. Like in this particular building, because we've got a lot of height, mm. in certain areas we wanted to go that little bit taller but because we were just being too greedy that's why we got some slanted ceilings and that but again that adds character yeah you know? um, but so no it's, it's it's you know the whole industry is just limited by your imagination mm -hmm. yeah at the end of the day you know and trying to be different yes you know that's what we try and try to be at farm again we try to be different than than other scale attractions and, and hopefully you know some of the some of the things we do are unique yeah you know? This is the area where we have the <coughs> the gimp suits yeah. paint, painted the same as the walls. So when you're coming through here, you can't differentiate between wall and people. And when the wall starts to move and come at you, that's yeah, really that's, that's <laughs> it's a bit trippy. So what's sort of the, the backstory to, um, to contagion? contagion? Um, it's all about a, 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 an experimental laboratory where the tests have gone wrong, basically. Yeah, and the um, the people working inside have been um, have been uh, affected by the, the experiments yeah. and have been turned into mutant clowns yeah. and, and all sorts of strange creatures of the night. Perfect. Yeah, for want of a phrase. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> it's just uh, basically we had to get from down there to up here. Yeah. yeah. So uh, Chapman does a lot of welding for me. He said, "Oh, we can do that." So yeah, I think he spent I don't know half a day just planning it all out. And uh, you know, you think about the thousands of people being up here. Oh, yeah, yeah. And it's uh, credit to me. Does it pay to know the right people when it's create, you're creating an attraction? I guess it's um, obviously the same which you can do yourself. Instead. Yeah, I mean, I mean, I, I basically I can weld, I can build, I can I'm a joiner, I can do everything. So when we get contractors in. And it's trying to pull the wool over your eyes. I'm thinking, hang on a minute, you know, you, just, you know what you're doing. Yeah. 
well, when it was called insanity, we had a, a clown room, and he actually picked a clown up, a prop a dummy, and he walked out with it under his arm, as, as if it was quite normal. You know? <laughs> I like that. Yes, yeah. needless to say, but it didn't get too far. Didn't get far. <laughs> so this is a, a bonus made for if you do zombie paintball, and the way that it's built into the attraction is that it's the decontamination zone. Right. And whilst we won't be using all of it, we'll certainly use a good half of it. In there, a lot of lasers, a lot of uh, strobe lights, um, and some other surprises as well. Yeah. So, this wins the award for best facade. Only because of the, the ladies dancing. Uh, uh, not just because of the ladies dancing. Um, but yeah, basically, Kate and here, ladies are dancing. There's some good theming and whatnot, but yeah, definitely. <laughs> Man, this, is, this is the House of Rock. Yes. Yeah. So we've got uh, we've got videos linked to the songs that have been played. The girls upstairs dancing. We've got a zombie rock band downstairs. Props. And then we've got um, in, the, in the windows downstairs a silhouette of zombie as well. Uh, and then new for this year we've got a big surprise. You can't reveal it yet because it's all lighting. Oh wow. Yeah. The, yeah. We we've tried it, but not to its full effect yet. So we're just yeah, quite, ex quite excited about that. The <laughs> was new a couple of years ago. Yes, right? yeah, this will be its third year. Yeah. Uh, and outdoors we've got flames with barrel rollers. It's all built around containers. Yeah. And um, they start the journey through this container. They weave their way through it. In fact, we can squeeze through here. So what made you sort of add this to Terra as opposed to making it its sort of own individual attraction? Do you want to make the Terra just um, bigger? Because, because as, an, as its own individual attraction, it's not particularly large by yeah. our standards. Yeah. Um, and we just wanted to go outdoor. We wanted some flames and loads of smoke. Yeah. You know, um, and we have these these big props um, to cut people in half. Yeah. Um, and also, you know, there's there's an element of certain people just like being outside. Yeah. And, you know, don't want to be cooped up inside a, a building. Okay. Uh, and it does just add to the, again, they're thinking, value for money, like they've gone through this, it's yeah. taking them 10, 15 minutes, yeah. twice as long as anywhere else. They've sort of visited, and, you know, they're, they're, they're thinking, wow, that was yeah. already an incredible maze of terror, but adding this onto it, it just yeah. adds to it. So now we're heading into Terra. Oh, oh my god! god. After we just had a sneak peek of their new sort of beginning well, show. Yeah, once your eyes get acclimatised. Wow. It's going to be quite dark in here, guys. I'll try and explain it as much. This, this is a waterfall as well, so we've got water coming out of his mouth into the pond down below. We've got our dragon up here. He is incredible. He, he moved, That's an amazing structure of a dragon. When we first started getting into the Halloween industry, we had Hallow Week with the children, and the corridor of fear was in here. <laughs> the adults actually enjoyed it more than the children. Yeah. <laughs> children would come out screaming and, and, and crying, and the parents would come out laughing and giggling, thinking, yeah. "This is great! You know, can you do some more?" Um, and then uh, on the back of that farm again was born, and the corridor of fear was our first house that we ever built. So then we that and developed to become the Terrell Farm. And now it's the beast of terror because it's just got more or less twice the size. It's just a beast. Yeah. Yeah. <laughs> we just got a sneak peek of the new scene for 2018 at Farmageddon. Be, be sure to listen to the Scare Track podcast mm. to hear all about that new scene. Do you get much like repeat customers throughout the like if they come one night? We, we will get. I mean, I've spoken to people over the years, and they'll come two or three times in the yeah. season, which is great. Now because they're real really big horror fans. Um, some people will come. What, every year, obviously. Yeah. yeah. Some people will come every three years. Yeah. Uh, but the way the industry works is, people can have a great night out, and then they tell people in the office, "Oh, you've got to go. It's so scary. It's scary. We had a great time this that, and the other." And people think, "Well, how can it be?" Yeah. yeah. And then they come out and they go, "Oh my God!" You know, it's sort of, yeah. and it's sort of it's sort of the word of mouth is yeah. is set is key, really. This is back now down into the, down the, the old room. part of the house oh, now. Yeah. That's a big extension, mm. definitely. Yeah, it's not just one of to see, it's a whole, yeah, it's like you say, it's well, a whole. Well, it's, it's as good as big as, as it, it's as large as it is upstairs as it is downstairs. Down, yeah, yeah. Wow. We've, used, we've used the whole footprint. Ah! Thank <laughs> you. 
Get you, Kate. <laughs> So he does that. He so does actually move, and his head moves, and he growls, and he stands up, and his arms wave. Um, but with no air at the moment, so he, he can't. He, he, he sits back about another six feet taller. That's, about, that's all done by air compression. Yeah. 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 He is the beast of terror. Oh yeah. my god, that's insane! I'm so excited. It's so amazing. <laughs> <laughs> So that was the Beast of Terror. <laughs> Thank you so much for letting us see that. Wow. I think I love it more now that I've seen it, like with lights on. Yeah, I can't wait to check that out. You know, the theme runs on, so it's, it, it just it, it, it grows and grows. So yeah. it, it is a bigger house. Yeah. Um, it's just um, an extension. It is an yeah, extension. Yeah, it, yeah. And I, I think it's just, you know, the way that, because we run Farm of Ted's in the daytime, you know, we often have a brainstorming session and think, oh, wouldn't it be great to do X, Y, and Z? And all of a sudden, depending on which business we're discussing, we might say, well, hang on a minute, how will it impact? Right then, guys, so there we go. Just a few snippets of the attractions here at Farmageddon uh, and, and obviously the, a bit of the interview we had with Mark Edwards, the uh, creative director, managing director here at Farmageddon and Farmer Ted's. If you want to listen to the whole thing, the whole interview, just head over to the podcast, uh, www.scaretrack.podbean.com, uh, or you can hear on iTunes, Stitcher, go onto our social media. It's on absolutely all of the platforms. We've got Instagram, Twitter, Snapchat, and of course Facebook. Uh, but guys, have you had a good time? I think it's been awesome. Absolutely, really enjoyed today. And don't forget that if you did like what you saw today and you like what you heard today on the podcast, don't forget tickets are on sale now yep, for Farmageddon, Farmageddon at Farmer Ted's Farm. Absolutely, yeah. Just ch- check out the link below. We'll put a link to get your tickets. Uh, they open on the 29th of September. They go all throughout selective nights up until the end of October. It really is an event not to be missed. We were just saying, Kate's first time, the sets, phenomenal. I, I feel so inspired. That is incredible. Just gonna go and stop painting. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. Uh, and a special mention to the Beast of Terror. Basically, Terror on the Farm, that was a huge attraction anyway. Two years ago, they added the foundry, making it even bigger. Now, the Beast of Terror, a whole second level on top. The attraction is doubled in length. I think it's the longest scare attraction here in the whole of the UK. Um, and it's here at Farmer Ted's at Farmageddon. So make sure you come and check it out. You will not regret it. Uh, and like I say, guys, to listen to the whole episode with Mark going through every attraction here at Farmageddon, just check out the podcast. Other than that, from Mikey, Hannah, Kate and Martin, I think that's it. We'll see you next time, guys. Bye. Thanks for watching the latest episode of Scare Camp, a Scare Track production. Be sure to like, share, comment and subscribe to the channel. You can also listen to our podcast over at www.scaretrack.podbean.com and interact with us over on our social media pages. Thanks again, Scare fans.